Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is an exercise from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to his website, Learn Python the Hard Way, and click on Read the Free HTML Online, it'll take you to the table of contents, which now has a new look, and scroll down to exercise 33, which is called While Loops. And if you click on that, it'll take you to this page. Now, in the last... Um, in the last video, we went through for loops, and that's a way of stepping through things, you know, for uh, each item in this list, step through them one at a time, do, 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 and go through. Now, um, that's a very common approach, and it's a very good approach. It is true, however, that there's also something called a while loop. Instead of, and so instead of stepping through a list one item at a time, it just keeps executing the list as long as a particular condition is true. Theoretically, you could use it to say, do this until a person clicks a button or do this until 12 o'clock. And that makes it more flexible. On the other hand, I have found uh, while loops to sometimes behave strangely. And so I prefer for loops whenever possible. But anyhow, let's go through this exercise. Now, what he's going to do, uh, actually, please note this. Zed agrees, while loops, use them sparingly. Usually a for loop is better, and, and I believe that. And you also want to make sure that if you have a condition like, you know, when the button gets pressed or something like that, you want to make sure that's actually going to happen at some point or else your loop's going to go on forever. And you might have to force quit it. Uh, he does make a good point here. He says, if things start to go crazy, hold down control C and that will sort of force quit the program. Okay, now here is the text. This is a pretty simple uh, bit of code. I'm going to have some comments on it. But I'm also going to have a lot of code that goes through the study drills because the five study drills ask for some important variations on this, and those deserve explanation as well. All right, I'm going to come over here to uh, Text Wrangler. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get it set up by creating a variable called i, which we'll be using for the index or increment, and that will start by setting that equal to zero. Then we'll create a variable to hold a list, we'll call it numbers. And it's going to be an equal, uh, excuse me, an empty list. That's why we have the brackets with nothing in them. Okay, and again, in other languages, that's called an array, but here it's called uh, a list. Now, for while loops, um, what we're going to be doing, the structure is very similar to uh, defining functions and if and for loops. It looks like this. You start with the keyword while, so that lets Python know that's what you're going to be doing. And then you have your variable that's going to be tested at each point. In this case, it's i. That's the variable that we created up here. And we have to set a criterion so it knows when to stop. In this case, we're just going to say when while i is less than 6. So as soon as it's equal to 6, it'll stop. And then we put a colon so it knows that we're done with that first line. And then we indent everything else after that so it knows it's a single code block. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to print for each time it goes through this, it's going to write here in the display at the top, i is whatever number. And then it's going to use this little format command d, and it's going to refer to the i right here, which is this variable right here, which refers back to this one. And then it's going to append to the object or the variable numbers. That's the one that we created right here. That's our empty array. It's going to append to that whatever value we currently have for i. So it's going to start at zero, and then it's going to um, cycle through. In fact, see, the next thing we do is we add one to it. So it's going to be zero when it first starts here, and it's going to append the zero, then it adds one. Now, in some languages, you can write this as i plus equals one, um, or i plus plus, but you know, Python sometimes doesn't like that. The i plus plus definitely does not work in Python, and some of the other increments don't work so well. So we're just going to write it out the long way. i equals i plus 1. That increments it up to the next step. And then at the bottom, um, it's going to print out the numbers now, and it's going to print out all of the numbers. So it's going to print out the entire list. And then at the bottom, i is equal to what? And that's because i changes between the top. You see, here it's 0 when it starts here, but then it gets bumped up 1, and so it's going to be 1 down here. And you'll notice too, it's, it's eventually it's going to get to six. It will print six down here, but then when it goes back up, i will be equal to six, and this uh, will no longer be true. This statement at the top will no longer true, be true, so it'll stop running. All right, and then print all the numbers. And then 
for num in numbers print num. That's a way of uh, cycling. Well, that's a for loop. And it goes through the numbers list. And for each one, it prints out the number individually. So that's quick and easy. Now, there are some variations from the study drills. I'll come back to those in a minute, OK? Let's just run this the way it is right now. If I come over here and I type Python, oh, by the way, please note I am, my working directory is the one that has all my scripts in it. It's right here. And I'm gonna come down to 33. You see, there's the text as it currently exists. I can type Python x33.py, hit return, and let me make that bigger. At the top, i is zero. There's the, the entire array now consists of a single number. At the bottom, it's added one, so now it's one. And then you see how the array, the, excuse me, not the array, the list gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And now the bottom number is one more than the top. And the bottom, i is six. And then when it goes back up to the top and it's checking this condition, is i less than six? It's not less than six. It's exactly six now, so it doesn't run anymore. And then it gets to this thing here that says, numbers now oh that excuse me it did that at each point and then when it's all done with this block here see and it's not going to run anymore because this condition is no longer true it'll do this one print the numbers and then go through the array and print each number and there they are zero one two three four five okay that's it that's a while now you can see that this one would be easier to do with a for loop because it's still stepping through it one by one um so let's go through z study drills just for a moment i think Here's number one, convert this while loop to a function that you can call and replace six in the test, that is i less than six, with a variable. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First, I'm putting in a little note here. I'm gonna insert a little blank space, uh, blank line, to separate things out. And now what I'm doing is I'm defining a function. I'm gonna call it drill one because it's the first study drill. And I'm gonna have a, an argument that I call n, and that's where you put in the number of items in the list. And then it's going to define i, and then it's going to create a uh, a list called numbers one because it's in um, it's the numbers and it's in study drill one. And then while i is less than n, go through and append it, and then increment it, and so on. And that's that's pretty easy. So that's going to define a function, and then in number two we get to call the function with a few different values. And I'm going to run it through with these two. So I just saved it. So now I can come over here. I'm going to clear the screen. And I'll use my up arrow to go to the command again, and I'll just hit return. And the important part is down here. Converting while loop to function drill one. That's what I wrote right here. And what you can see is I did it once by calling in three. See there, I used the function drill one, and I put three in as my argument. And it did it, zero, one, two, and then printed the list. And then I did it with eight as my argument in this one, and it does the same thing. And again. Uh, the n3 is the upper limit, and that's exclusive upper limit. It starts at zero, and it goes to one less than the upper limit, which is what you see going on here. Okay, that one's pretty easy. I'm going to clear this over here. And let's see what is the next item on this. Number three, Z says, add another variable to the function arguments that you can pass in that lets you change the plus one on line eight so you can change how much it increments by. That is, we're changing the step size. So now we're gonna have two arguments. I'm gonna create a little bit of text here, and then I'm gonna call it drill three because that's what we're at. And I'm gonna have two arguments. N is the, uh, the, the maximum value, the highest value, and S is going to be the steps that we go through. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the same thing, except the one difference here is this. Instead of being i plus one, which is what we had right here, we're gonna change it i plus s. It'll be whatever the thing is. And otherwise, it's the same. And so for drill four, we just run through it. And I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna save this for a moment so it'll run. And then I'm gonna do drill three, and I'm gonna put in the two values, 12 and three. Now, I, I probably shouldn't be calling it n because this is the maximum. It's not gonna print 12 numbers because it's counting by threes now. But let me come back over here and run the function. And you see it is printed off a whole lot of stuff, but we're interested in this part down here. Create the function, and it says using drill three with n equals 12 and s equals three. That's because I, I told it to print out that text. Then you see what it did, zero, three, six, nine. And that's as far as it goes because the next one up would be 12 and it needs to be less than 12. 
So um, that one worked. It's a function, and it's, you can specify the upper limit with a variable and the step size with a variable. And then we've got one more. He says, now write it to use for loops and range instead. Do you need the incrementer in the middle anymore? What happens if you don't get rid of it? Well, here's what happens. Now I'm defining a function, drill5, where n and s are specified. And it's the interior stuff that's going to be different because, you know, calling the function, it looks the same. I, I type in drill three or five and I put in my two numbers, but the interior stuff's going to be different. What I do here is I create the array, but instead of doing a little I thing to step through it, I just tell it, use the range zero as the bottom, as the starting point, n as the top, and s as the step. Now, I have to use zero here. Normally, if you're just specifying the upper limit, you don't need to use zero because that's implied. However, if I only have two numbers in there, it's going to assume that's the starting point and the ending point, or the, excuse me, the amount to step by. So I need to have all three of them there to make it explicit so it knows that the three numbers mean start, stop, and step. And then we just uh, use a for loop for i in numbers five. That's the name of my list here. Go through and do this. And I will run it right here with this example. And let's just make sure that's saved. And I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to use the up arrow to get my last command and hit return. And down here at the bottom, you can see it does the same thing. The reason it printed number 12 though is because I, I made it so that my upper limit was 14 and my step was four. So zero, four, eight, 12, and we're good. So that's a rather long explanation, but you can see uh, how to use a while loop and also that you can do a lot of it with functions and for loops, which in most situations will work better for you. Anyhow, that's it for now. Hope that made sense and I'll see you at the next video.